Well, hello again, Park Lawn family. Welcome to another exciting edition of 10 Minute Tuesday. Today, I have a very special guest. All of our guests are special, so get used to me saying that. But today, we have one of our elders. And this young man, oh my goodness, he is a powerhouse. He and his wife, like, I just love, love, love this couple. So, I want everybody to say hello. Elder Kenwine, say hello to the people. <laughs> what up, y'all? What's up, PAOG family? So late, Hope you're doing well. <laughs> <laughs> like one of the coolest elders you'll ever meet. He's like, yeah, what up? You know, <laughs> Elder Kenwine. <laughs> he is such a relatable guy. And today, you're going to see why we um, just love Elder Kenwine. He works in so many different areas. Besides being an elder, you are the leader of one of the leaders of Link Generation. Um, you are one of our considered one of our next gen um, leaders. He works with us. My husband and I are so thankful, Jesus, that he is a part of the youth ministry. Like he has his hands in a lot of different areas. So, Elder Kenwan, just to start out, what would you say to our membership our, and our friends and family of Parkland? What do you want them to know during this time frame? Yeah, and thank you, Rhonda, for having me. Um, I want the PAOG family to know uh, God has their best interest in mind. So even though things aren't necessarily the ideal right now, God has a plan for you, right? God still considers you you right and I think in this time God is calling us all back to a really an intimate time of fellowship with him right how much do you know me right and how much do you trust me right and where are we going right when you can't see where you're headed into right do you trust me me to be your leader right when you can't see what's coming behind you do you trust me to be your rear guard and I think God has proven itself even throughout scripture to that um, and I want you to trust him even in this moment now, right? The believers have something to rejoice about. Um, so be happy, um, continue to trust in him, uh, know that he wants to spend time with you during this time. He wants to deepen that relationship. So um, I say count it as a, a, an opportunity, uh, really, and be encouraged because um, God loves you. So I want to say that. Hey, Amen. I love it. Thank you so much for that. That was very encouraging. So... Jumping right into our questions, I want you to, you told me, you know, we've had many conversations, but you told me a story about, you know, becoming an elder and not necessarily getting into the story, but you're like, yeah, that wasn't necessarily the plan that you had, <laughs> but talk to us a little bit about uh, seeing God's plan, God's hand on your life and, you know, um, in terms of the direction that God wanted you to go. Might have been a little different from what you would have chosen. Yeah, um, um, interesting. In that moment, and I shared with you, you know, Bishop hit me on the chat, like, Ken Juan, are you coming to service today? <laughs> and I'm like, Bishop, it's Sunday. If it's Sunday, I'm going to be there. Right? So, um, you know, when he, when he asked me, I was like, okay, well, maybe something special is happening. And, um, and then during service, he, you know, he essentially um, basically told the congregation and me for the first time, hey, Kim Wan, you know, we want you to be a candidate for elder. And I'm like, yes, Bishop, if you, if God revealed it to you, it must be true. Um, so, you know, I, I really wasn't, you know, thinking about that. Um, but I think that God surprises us all, right? So he calls us not only for where we are, but for where we're going. Um, and it was one of those moments where I'm like, okay, God, I just have to trust uh, that you're calling me to where uh, I'm going. So it was a shock to me. Um, but since I've been able to do it with the level of grace, you know, so if God called you to it, he'll give you a level of grace to be able to deal with it. Right. So I love my fellow elders um, and I love Bishop, too. But he put me on the spot and I was like, OK, <laughs> we running with this. You know, you Bishop, it's all right. It's good. It's good. <laughs> so talk Absolutely. about different times in your life that you were like, you know, when you say like, man, that's not exactly where I was headed. But reflecting back. What were some areas where you know, like, you could look back and say, yep, God was preparing me? Yeah, um, no, it's interesting, man, because, you know, there's a lot of pivotal moments. Are we going back to BC days? How far back can we go with this? <laughs> Burlight Bur Chamber days? <laughs> um, goodness, man. Um, I would say 
a time where I really felt um, his, you know, looking back in retrospect, and it's interesting because a lot of times we have to look back to be able to see what God was doing. Mm -hmm. um, I'd go back to high school. Um, I'd say in about, around about 2003, I feel like God was really making a, a, a really pivotal move in my life. Around about 2003, I ended up going to Upward Bound, so it's a pre-college program. Um, and I had some friends uh, from the block who, you know, was like, you know, I think you should, you should consider this, right? And I was like, anything to get off the block for the summer and be able to do something, because I'm sick and tired of waiting on y'all coming home so I can kick it with y'all. So um, little did I know, you know, God was really setting me up for, you know, really developing my academic career. He was like, I'm about to show you what's possible academically. Um, yeah. We're about to take this to the next level. Um, and when I was, when I applied, long story short, I ended up getting in. Uh, and that same year, I met Megan Bledsoe. So Megan Bledsoe and Mother Cheryl Bledsoe, they go to Parkline as well. And Megan was like, look, Kim Wan, I know you. You're going to love Pastor Harvey. You need to come to my church. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, I'm not, I'm not evil. You know, I, I love God. So I'll come to your church. I don't have a problem. Me and him don't have much of a relationship or much of anything to do with each other right now. Um, but I'll come, uh, and it was also a girl that I was filling at the same time, and she went there. So I was like, okay, well, it's going to be a win-win for me. Um, <laughs> and I ended up going to Parkline, uh, and little did I know at that time, God was like, yeah, you think a friend invited you. Uh, you think mm -hmm. you were coming for a girl, but I got different plans. And as you know, I've been there since, uh, and I owe PAOG, man, to, to just about every um, thing that I have, everything that I am today, um, the provision that was stored up for me, I received that through the house at PAOG. Um, and around that same time, uh, post that summer, I ended up going to uh, Custer High School, and that's when I met Marvin Lane. So everything was coming to a head. So he set me up academically. I'm like, okay, it is what it is. Um, <laughs> He was like, okay, I'm going to get you in a position where you can hear from me. And now I'm about to introduce you to what I didn't know at the time would, would be my future wife. So, yes. and I tried to get out of I tried to get out of Custer. Um, I left, actually. I successfully left. Um, but the school that I went to, and I ain't going to tell y'all what it is, because I know some of y'all are going to be upset. Um, but I was like, the guy made it so horrible for me there um, that I ended up going back to Custer. And that's when I was in class with Marveline. Uh, and oh, she ended up as you know, being my future wife. So I feel like 2003 was a really pivotal time where God was setting up a few things um, for me. That's awesome. So what would you say then to young people? Because one thing I heard you say at the beginning of the story is the individuals you were hanging around, right? Yeah. They were essentially the, the ones that God used for that initial setup of joining Upward Bound. So they got you into, attracted you to something that was positive and worthwhile for you. What would you say to young people in terms of how we choose our friends and the relationships that we're in? Um, you know, God wants to use you at an early age, which means, you know, you need to be considering at an early age um, what it is that you need to be doing to put yourself in a better, in the position, in the best position to be able to do um, what God is calling you to do. Um, first, the relation, the first relationship that you have to uh, have is one with him, right? That's the most important. And I feel with that, you'll begin to, to, you know, attract and also uh, weed out those who you shouldn't be spending time with, right? Without getting too much in depth, that's how I, that's how I see it. The squad that I had at a young age, you know, I always have folks around me who want more, um, but at the same time, you know, I have them cats too who, you know, we just running together because we on a mission, you know, and those missions, <laughs> those missions that you, that I was on, you know, they weren't necessarily conducive to what I feel God was calling me to, but it's like, we out here, <laughs> you know, this is what we have to, you know, this is what we're doing right now. Um, and, you know, a lot of times I think that we make decisions um, for the environment that we're in. Um, as opposed to, you know, the environment that we want to be in, right? We're making decisions for those who are around as opposed to, um, you know, decisions that can attract those who we prefer to be around. I love it. Um, <laughs> amazing job. This has been a, a great time. Elder Kim Wong, we want to thank you. Uh, we want you and Marveline to stay safe during this time, but we appreciate the time that you were willing to take out with us. 
Um, and until next time, PALG family, y'all say, you know, we got to do it as smooth as Elder Kim Peace out, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> hey.